Coming up on Bulldog Broadcast, Daniel evaluates teen mental health. Stephanie and Steven introduce a new segment. And later, Brianne gives us a first-hand look at football playoffs. Today is Thursday, November 19th, 2015, and BBC starts now. Good afternoon, Bulldogs, and welcome to this enticing edition of Bulldog Broadcast. I'm Sofia Valdez. And I'm Kyla Navarro. Our theme this week is perspective. We're here at the Old Park Mall where citizens can gain a new perspective of Las Cruces history. We have a stupendous show for you this week, so let's get started. On Friday, November 13th, Paris, France endured the most deadly attack since World War II. The six terrorist attacks that took place in Paris were claimed by an extremist militant group, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, better known as ISIS. These horrifying attacks included five bombs at three locations and three mass shootings. Together, these attacks took 125 lives and left 480 injured. The hashtag Pray for Paris became the top trend on Twitter overnight, letting the entire world know in a matter of hours. There are many organizations set up with relief funds for victims and survivors online. You can go to USA.com to learn more. Now Stephanie introduces a new segment called Bulldog Barks. Each week, a member of BBC staff will venture out to the student body to discover a new perspective. Bulldogs Bark! This week, we'll be looking at the innovator Matthew Torres, who competed in Allstate for the past three years. You get into the audition rooms, or practice rooms, and everyone's playing, and they all sound really, really good. And it's kind of, you know, makes your confidence fall a little bit. Um, I was a little shaky, even still this year. My hands still shake a little, but it's worth it. It's fun. He has been playing the clarinet since sixth grade, but not once did he think he could make it. Um, my sister thinks that, I'm, that I was good enough to make it. I didn't think so. And she kind of signed me up without telling me. So, like, I had no idea that I was going to audition until two weeks before. And then she just gave me my music. She was like, hey, you're auditioning. Get ready. And I kind of freaked out and almost died, but it's okay. Allstate is a yearly competition for the best high school musicians all over New Mexico to showcase their skills. That a lot of other students do things differently, but also like going, going for the same goal and seeing that bigger picture of where they fit in, in the realm of things. And for me, personally, it was one of those things where, where I saw how good other students were and I wanted to be good like they were and then surpass where they were. And I, you know, it was a huge motivator for me and I think it, it, the, the same goes for any of the other students that do it. Uh, I was a freshman when I made it. Um, and then last year I also made it and results are set to come out on Monday for this year. So, fingers crossed. The results have came out and a combination of hard work and talent has earned Matthew another All-State position. Nine more LCHS band students made All-State with one alternate, while one student made Jazz All-State with two alternates. We'll give you a new perspective after this quick break. Coming up after the break, Hannah introduces the BBCers to a new candy, and later we get a sports update. We'll be right back. More than half of teen mental illness in the U.S. goes unnoticed. Daniel raises awareness for this striking statistic. About 20% of teenagers worldwide have a diagnosable mental disorder. 
whether it be personality or behavioral disorders, each may impair a student's daily life. As for our fellow Bulldog, Rachel Medina, the statistics were all too real. Uh, anxiety, I was about eight years old. I was at my dad's house and I started freaking out really bad. I didn't know what was happening. It kind of felt like I was dying. It was weird. And my sister, who has experience with it, actually stopped me and just kind of explained to me what was going on. And depression was around the sixth grade. Growing up as a child, Rachel attended a private Catholic school where she stayed from kindergarten to eighth grade. It wasn't until her freshman year that she transitioned to a public high school. It was weird. I, I kind of went from having the same 20 people since kindergarten to just suddenly all of these people. It was a lot of different personalities, I guess, and I think that kind of amplified everything. This can go along with the nearly 40% of people that suffer with a mental health problem and go untreated. Rachel was fortunate enough to get help in the most unlikely of ways. I was in the middle of lunch at school and I started crying and freaking out and I could barely move. And actually one of the security guards took me to the health center and that's where I met my counselor. She keeps her anxiety and depression in check by following the advice of her counselor and by hanging out with friends and being involved in the drama department. Long scene, so the, yeah. For many young adults, the seemingly overwhelming pain of having to deal with these issues is too much to bear. So I consulted an expert on mental health issues in teenagers to discover how many young adults could possibly deal with or cope with such a monstrous crisis. Um, there are a variety of ways to, uh, to address mental health, and so some of them are what we call general psychotherapy, which is when you would come in to see someone like myself. Um, and we do some processing, which is maybe talking about your feelings, talking about the situation. There's hundreds probably of different uh, theories and modalities for psychotherapy. Dr. Jackson explains how transitioning schools can affect students. It's called adjustment. So for a lot of students, adjustment is getting used to new circumstances. And whether you're a, a youth or adult or a student, it can be difficult. You have to make new friends, you have to meet new people. Um, and sometimes that can be overwhelming, which is why it's important to have mental health resources in the community and at your school. Um, the National Association of Mental Health es estimates that um, suicidality from adjustment is the number two uh, reason for death between, for students between age 15 and 34. Afterwards, Dr. Jackson offers a final word of advice. Um, if a student came in, I would um, ask them what's going on. And so it depends. If a student is in crisis, which can happen, students should see a therapist or a counselor if they're feeling like they have any thoughts of hurting themselves or someone else. Um, we would talk to them and try to get a safety plan and help them to figure out what the core issue is. If you believe that you have a mental issue, please visit your guidance counselor or agoracares.org. This has been Daniel Salinas reporting for Bulldog Broadcast. Thanks, Daniel. On this week's edition of BBC Try Stuff, Hannah tests BBC Sears taste buds. I used to eat dog food out of my dog's bowl. I used to eat dog food. Can we just leave it? Sit. Three. Two of these years. I got chocolate pudding for sure. It's good. Twelve seconds later. No, it's mine. It is mine. It's dog food, but in a way this tastes like a steak taco. Oh, the texture. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I could feel it in my mouth. Dude, it's not even that bad. I don't like dog food. What? And is this the licorice? Dog food. Please. Are you recording? Do with this one. I don't like licorice or skunk this smell. This is the one I hate the most, honestly. Ladies first. Sorry, mom, if I die. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Satan. Hey, I need a better flavor. I need a better flavor. Oh god. 
I got moldy too, so yeah, I should probably have caramel for him. Mine's definitely the rotten egg. I feel very unlucky. <laughs> I still think this tastes disgusting. <laughs> this rotten egg just tastes like a fart that someone's put in your mouth. Yeah. It smells like this Can is I have still a gross. nice flavor? I haven't done any of these, which is really scary. Am I gonna get sick? Yes. No. <laughs> I know which one. Did you get the good one? I definitely did not. <laughs> it's kind of In the arms of the angels. <laughs> <laughs> they both got it. They both got it? Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> oh god. Swallow, swallow, swallow. I'm not swallowing. <laughs> Now let's send it over to Brianne for a sports update. What's up Bulldogs? I'm Brianne Woods and you're watching Bulldog Sports. Football went head to head with the Cibola Cougars on Saturday, November 14th. They fall all game long and reign victorious with a score of 38 to 0, with two touchdowns made by Cameron Miller, two by Brandon Baeza, and two by Peyton Ball. They advance to the next round of playoffs where they'll be taking on the Rio Rancho Rams on November 20th. Volleyball also traveled up to state where they made it to the quarterfinals, but lost to Cleveland Storm, ending their season with a 12 to 12 record. Good job, Volleyball! Girls Basketball Slam dunked into their season on Tuesday, November 10th with the win over America's High School with a score of 49-43, with 27 points made by Jaden Perez and 8 by Megan Garan. The ladies' next game will be on November 21st against Hobbs. Good luck, dogs! Well, that's all I got for you this week, dogs. I'm Brianne Woods, and this has been Bulldog Sports. In the upcoming weeks, BBC is going to be offering some sweet surprises. For a chance to win a special surprise, all you have to do is answer this simple riddle. What do thieves get for stealing a calendar? Once you have your answer, make sure to go follow us on Instagram at Bulldog Broadcast and comment on the photo with the riddle and we'll contact you if you win. May the odds be ever in your favor. And that's all we have for you this week. I'm Kyla Navarro. And I'm Sofia Valdez. Thanks for watching, dogs.